YouTube, Electric Adventures here with the next episode in Let's Make a Retro Game. Uh, this is once again continuing our sort of side episodes where we need to look into some techniques before we can um, better progress our game. And um, we finished off our graphics and sprites last two episodes and now we're going to start looking at sound because in our game we're going to want sound effects and of course music. So first, how does sound work? So once again, I have prepared an article to go with this one. Now, this becomes a little bit more complicated because the Coleco, um, as well as its brethren, the um, the SG1000, SC3000, um, also I believe the Memotech has the sound same sound chip as well, have the SN76389A programmable sound generator, whereas the MSX Spectre Video um, and a couple of others have the so cheating a little bit here. Um, uh, the AY38910 program will sound general, and they are similar, but they're not the same. So I'm sort of going to have to split this episode. So um, we'll, we'll do the Coleco first, and then we'll cover the MSX. Um, but the demo I have prepared is exactly the same for each system. Now we're starting with um, um, a start code which is like called music demo so it's a complete new template. I will take you through a couple of the things that I've added to that as well. Um, but first let's go to our theory. So obviously a bit of a difference in platforms. Now the ColecoVision uh, uses the text instruments SN76389A program or sound generator chip. It's got three tone generators, that means it can independently three, dif three different tones and one noise generator. Um, now the noise is not mixed with the tones, it is actually a separate channel, so it actually has four channels. Um, this particular sound chip can only generate square waves, so basically you set the tone and it will play that tone and keep on playing that tone until you change it. You can change the amplitude or volume um, of the tone, so you can make it louder and softer, um, but that's all you can do and it just you just set a tone and it will stay at that tone until you do something else. So you have to use the main CPU to change and play your notes. Uh, so even simple sound effects like a zap sound, a zap sound needs to change the tone over time and I'll sort of try and give a bit of an example in that in the thing we put together. But anyway, a bit more Sephardic so interest. So this is a square wave. A square wave. So, uh, so the frequency or tone that you can set on each channel has 10 bits we can use to select that with. So that gives you the values from 0 to 1023. Uh, 1 is the highest frequency, so that's going to be the highest pitch sound and 1023 is the lowest frequency, which is the lowest it can go. Um, so it gives you a feature range of, that cover 8 octaves of the musical scale from A2, and I'm not a big music person so I don't exactly know what these things, and 10 cents, and A12 and 12 cents. I have gotten this off of a couple of sites. Now the noise channel independently can either generate periodic or white noise. Um, bit harder. We won't be demonstrating that in this particular thing. I'm going to leave that to our next episode where we're actually going to generate some sound chips. And we have two bits remaining that set a shift weight, which is basically sort of the volume, is the best way to describe it. And this is where the sound chips differ the most. This sound channel and the fact, um, the shape of the wave. So the volume of each channel has four bits, so that gives you a value from 0 to 15. And in reverse of logic, 0 represents full volume and 15 represents silence. Um, so a lot to absorb. So now let's have a little bit of a look at um, some code. Now before I do that, I'm just going to side skip. I'm going to show you the code where it is at right now. It's where we're starting from. So let's go into our code. So I have the Coleco version open at the moment because we're going to the Coleco section. So it's got our normal declaration stuff and we have our normal um, initialization, setting of timing, setting screen mode, initializing the RAM. Um, we are using the controllers in this example, so I set up the RAM for that. And we create our actual timers, and that's how we, you know, previous we've timed everything. Um, we've got our main here that displays our screen. All that really does is send um, 
we've got one sprite that we're going to send to uh, to use and um, we have a character set that we load and don't worry about it, all the data is in there you don't have to worry about that I've just got it's pretty much the same character set as I was using the last two episodes um, and our initial screen thing I have a um, very lazily just got the screen layout straight from a bit of um, it, it's in the ROM you're gonna have a look at it and we just copy that straight to video memory we clear out a joystick buffer um, we set up our video uh, uh, our hook that's run every time we get a vertical refresh and we have already set up in this example so we've got um, some memory allocated to uh, the frequency of each channel and some memory allocated to each volume of the channels and this is just setting them up initially and setting up a cursor now I've introduced and this is the changes in the previous templates I've introduced an eighth second timer which obviously is, means things will happen a lot more quickly so in the library um, in our down the bottom here in our create timers section for that this is only really for those who are interested we are creating a new um, timer called the eighth second timer easy peasy which oh, sorry that's actually this is setting it up so we get whether the system is an American or not um, we, which is so it's either going to be 60 or 50 we divide that by 3 and that's going to get us our 1 8th timer so we shift 3 bits it's not divided by 3 is it? no uh, so that gives us 1 8th excuse electric adventures as he talks rubbish there for a second right um, and then in our main loop here we've gone to call select channel and call player actions so what this does is um, player actions allows you to change the values that are on screen for the, either the frequency or the volume and the select channel allows you which channel we're playing with sort of you know won't make a lot of sense until we have a look at it so let's go and have a quick look at that so this is our base template you don't need to worry about this um, we're just going to add some code to it to generate the sound so I'll play this so you can have a look so there we go here is our sound demo we have um, a title, sound demo, and we've got three columns, channel, volume, and frequency. You press the space bar, and it'll move between channels. You press right and left. That's going to increase and decrease the frequency value. This is all, all this is doing, in increasing and decreasing numbers. And then we press up and down to change the volume. All right, we can change to a different one. The space bar is a little sensitive, and we can adjust another one. We need a little bit of a debounce thing there so you can't keep holding the space bar down. But there we go. So simple, <coughs> it's a bit of user interface functionality. I'm not really going to cover the precise logic of that. I'll leave you guys to have a look at the code because the main thing we're talking about here is sound. But it might be an interesting bit of code for you guys to go and have a look at. So back to our article. So now we need to add some code to initialize the sound chip to a known state. Now with the uh, Coleco, I am going to program these directly to the sound port. Um, there are some useful routines in the BIOS, uh, which I'll skip to in the next episode. So let's grab this bit of code here and pop into our code. Sorry, clicking on the wrong thing. So down here, let's put it after these routines here. So that's our action routines before character set. Let's pop that. Or not. Okay, having some cut and paste problems. I don't know why my keyboard is disabled at the moment. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to declare a variable here. This probably should be in our include files here, but I've got it here for clarity in our lesson. And this is the port that we use to communicate with on the Coleco. Um, the port number is, uh, not, I haven't looked it up, it's probably a different number on the SG, SC1, um, 
SG1000, SC3000 computers, and probably the Memotech as well, but it only has one port that handles multiple roles. Then we have a, a knit sound routine. So using, um, and actually probably we can go back to our article here. Did I put that table in there? No, I haven't. Now I may extend the article a little bit to actually show this physical table of setup. So what this is doing is this right hand part here, these four bits are our volume, and this first nibble, or left hand side nibble, is selecting what we're going to do. Um, so it's pretty much these left hand two things are the channel, and the right hand things are uh, what we're controlling, either the tone or the volume that we're setting. Um, so that really should say channel one. So channel one, volume off. So channel one, volume off. And this is channel two, volume off. So it's setting the, cha the volume to 15. Remember how I said zero is full volume and 15 is zero volume. And we can do the same thing for the noise channel as well. So very, very simple, and we'll call that in a minute. So back to our code. Um, so there's only one port now. So this single routine will set the volume of all three channels from our values in memory. So let's grab that. And pop that straight after that. It's very annoying not being able to use the keyboard. Okay. So what we do, so set sound volume. So this goes and gets the address of this variable. Uh, we our command. So this time, I just want to compare this. So this was, remember, the com the left hand side is exactly the same because we're going to set the volume. We've left these bits zero, and then we want to OR it with whatever is storing stored in the memory address pointed to by HL. So all the bits that are on in that volume thing. So say the volume was 15, which is zero, it would be 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0, 0. You all that with these two, you're going to end up with 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, just like this thing up here. And then we output that to the sound port. So it's very easy to send the command to the sound port. Then we increment our HGL to the next spot in memory, which will be our next volume uh, memory location. And we set it up so we're talking about changing the um, channel number two's volume, do the same thing, or with what's in memory, send it out to the sound port, and do it again, and that's the channel three volume, and we do it again, and that's our noise volume. So I've got a generic routine, all we have to do is change some stuff in memory, and it will, and call this once, and it will set all of the volumes for all of the channels at once. Just makes it easier for us to use. Right, next. Uh, okay, now, this is to set our frequency. This is a little bit more complicated because we've got remember we've got ten bits. So let's grab these. Go back to our code. Use right click paste. Yuck. Okay, so I've got one function called set all sound frequencies, um, and what that does is it loads our RAM pointer up to our first frequency thing, it sets our command, now once again I'm going to compare that to our previous one, see how it is, it doesn't have this bit set, which means it's going to um, change the tone rather than the, uh, sorry, the, it's going to set the frequency rather than the volume, then it's going to call kit set sound frequency, which is that routine down here, we'll have a look in a minute, and then we load it up so it's the next channel, do the same thing and the next channel we're only dealing with the three tone channels not the noise one and then our set sound frequency this is the one that has to do all the hard work so it gets the value out of our whatever is pointed to HL we only want the right four bits of that um, so we or it with this value here so in this case it would or it with there and our value would end up here so that's going to set those first four bits of the um, frequency and then we're going to grab w the value in there and then we're going to get the left hand part of the value and we'll just save that in D for a minute and we'll increment HL so that'll be pointing to the next spot in memory 
we'll grab that we'll make sure that we're only looking the right four bits of that one and we'll or our value in D remember our value in D is in the left four bytes uh, bits sorry did I say bytes um, put those together and then we're going to rotate it so what we're this, these doing these four rotate um, with carry will mean we're actually going to flip the left and right nibbles of the byte around so it's a bit of a cheat and then we output that to the port and then we increment our address and we're actually pointing to the next uh, memory address which allows us to call it up here and not have to, to worry about setting the um, pointer in RAM again so I hope I explained that well but now we need to put in some supporting code okay so slot interruption I've got myself set up for the next bit so we go back up to the start of our code we've initialized our stack top there we now need to call our code to initialize our sound so let's make sure that there's no sound playing so basically we, as we went over before we're just setting the volume to be zero um, everything's the same there now let's go down to here so where we set up our memory of um, our frequencies and our initial volume settings it's a good idea that we set the sound to the things that are in those values so let's call our two routines here so set all sound frequencies and set sound volume so that will set the volumes and the frequencies to be what's displayed on the screen and then one more little addition we're going to call them again inside our loop here so after we've um, allowed the the user to select uh, a particular channel and change the frequency of volume we're going to update those values so the sound will change and that's all we need to do so let's build that it's all good come back to our emulator all right so that works um, so as soon as we press to the right we should be able to hear some sound so I was hearing a tone going from high all the way down to low now I am moving this fairly chunkily otherwise it will take too long so there we go I've got all the way around now this is currently at volume 5 show you a bit of granularity in the volume if we hold it down a bit of a UFO sound and if you go the other way get a bit of a bounce sound and obviously if you did this quicker you would get a bit of a, a sound making a zap sound could be um, you know making a change in a fairly high frequency um, over a period of time um, change frequencies quite quickly and get a zap sound we'll play about that next time so we'll leave that one going we'll just turn this volume down a little bit now let's make the other channel go so hopefully you can discern that there are two separate tones playing same thing okay now let's add a third tone so now we've got a bit of a harmony going on um, so what I'll do I'll stop that now and we'll flip over to the Collego side of things but it should allow you to have a bit of a play and just to see the different tones and the volume control you can do on the sound chip so what I'm going to do here is change the emulation to MSX for it ready for our next bit. Okay, so just a second, I'll get set up. 
Okay, so here we go with our MSX template. Um, and we'll go back to our document. So I don't need to update that for I publish it. Right, now for MSX Inspector Video. So, MSX Inspector Video, use a General Instruments AY-3-8910 programmable sound chip generator. It's very similar to the other chip. It also has three tone generators and one noise generator. So at first glance, it looks pretty much the same but there's some key differences. The generation of the noise is actually mixed with one of the channels. So it has a larger range of frequencies. So 32 values instead of four. Um, so that allows a lot more range in the sound, which is why you can get a lot more, um, I suppose, you know, uh, it, percussion type sounds out of the MSX chip. Um, also, as well as just setting the volume of a channel, uh, at any one time you can have one of these wave patterns set. Um, and one or more of the channels can be set to the current wave pattern. You can only have one wave pattern at any particular time. Um, and a channel can either be set to its own volume, so own fixed tone, or it can be set to actually use the sound wave. So, as an example, you could set channel 1 at a particular tone and to this sound waveform shape and it would continue going up and down like this until you told it to do something else. So what this allows you to do is to make sounds and I made my early sound effects for my games simply using the waveforms. Um, you set them and, and they just play and they end. Especially this one here is particularly useful, has volume that decreases and then and then off it goes. As you can see, that one's repeated a couple of times. The so same as you've got this one that goes up and then goes to a set volume as well. Um, so, And you can set the length or the period of this wave as well. So you can you set the distance between here and here, the end of each particular waveform. Um, so pretty much it's set and forget, and then um, for especially for a sound effect. Um, and But the, the, obviously the limitation is you can only do one, you can only select one waveform at a time. But you could still have two other channels playing music, controlling the volume and the tone specifically on those, CPU bound, and then you could have another channel dedicated to your sound effects. And plus also being able to mix the noise directly with a channel and its tone allows you to a lot more flexibility. Um, now if you do get the Super Game module for the ColecoVision, that, what that adds is 32k of RAM instead of one, the 1k that a Coleco has and it adds an AY sound chip which is why it is so easy to uh, port a, a MSX game across to the ColecoVision once you've got the Super Game module. Um, not that I necessarily approve of that unless you have the permission of the original author. Now, programming them is a lot more tricky. You actually have, and this is why I put this table up, um, you have 15 or 16 registers, um, although the last two registers are for controlling another device that can be attached to the, um, to the actual sound chip. Now, there was actually a speech module developed by a fellow for the ColecoVision um, that also include a clone of the Super Game module uh, that used those extra ports on the sound chip to communicate with the sound with the um, voice chip so interesting so we'll only be dealing with these first 14 registers so as you can see a register uh, there's a set of registers for the channel a tone and you've got a fine and then of course you've got 12 bits of um, of frequency values there and same with B and same with C. So you actually do have a slightly larger range of frequencies you can do with the MSX chip as well. Um, I believe a little bit higher and a little bit lower. And then you have the period of the noise. Um, and then you have this enable uh, register which enables you to enable it and it's sort of like your mixing control. Um, so you turn on noise and tone for a particular channel. So you can actually have the noise mixed with one or more channels. You can have all three channels mixed with the noise, or just one or none of them. And you can generate a tone as well as the noise. Um, as I get a pop-up, which you can probably see slightly above. Damn auto uh, Then we have a set of registers to control our the volume of each of the channels. 
and it has basically as soon as you set this bit here it means it will use the currently selected envelope um, otherwise it'll use the volume that you set so you've got one two three four five bits of volume so you have actually a little bit more control over volume as well um, then you have your envelope period so that's uh, 12 bits of of the um, how wide the uh, period of your envelope is and then this register 14 basically controls which one of these patterns that you use that's this bit pattern you can see up here this all sounds rather complicated so let's add some code so initialize it and we're going to be good citizens here um, for the MSX at least we are going to use the inbuilt ROM routine write PSG which does all that hard work for you and you sh when you're writing MSX stuff you really should be a good citizen and use the ROM uh, wherever possible this allows your game to stay compatible um, for MSX2 and MSX2 plus the whole idea of having a ROM uh, in the first place so let's go back to our code that's the wrong one let's go down same place as in the other code and all this does is we have an init sound we write to register 7 which is our mixer and we disable noise and enable all three tones so it's not quite the same we're gonna you will hear a tone playing unless we do um, some other initialize not quite as clean as that one I probably should have disabled everything and then have an enable tone one um, and I explain that here. The Spectre Video code, however, uh, just to explain something, when you start up uh, a Spectre Video ROM, it actually the ROM fills uh, the bottom two banks of the ROM are enabled immediately. Actually, all four banks of the ROM are enabled immediately, and you have to actually turn off the top two banks so that you're going to get access to the RAM, um, and you still do, cannot see the BIOS unless you introduce um, bank switching into your own code in the ROM so it's actually much easier if I just um, add this very simple routine from the BIOS to my own cartridge so you'll actually find this function in the code which I'll, I'll, sh I'll, I'll quickly go over at the end and that's what sort of what I'm explaining here so there is this accompanying article that comes with all of my episodes so for some reason cut and paste is now working with the keys Okay, so set sound volume. It's very similar to our one in our Coleco. So we go and get the we set HL to the memory location um, that is um, holding our volume. Um, now E is the actual. We get the value out of HL here. Uh, we load A equals eight. That's the actual register we're writing to. Let's go back to our document. Come back up here. So register eight channel A envelope on off and volume so we're going to get the value out of here which controls our volume and we're going to write it to the to register 8 increment address make the register 9 go back to our document just to double check yes that's channel B write to the PSG increment address grab our next value set it to 10 which is the next channel volume so you can see, very simple when you use inbuilt routines that do most of the hard work for you. Now, go back down to our thing. So now we have a very similar routine to our previous one. So, set all sound frequencies. Point our memory address to our first frequency make a equals zero that's the quick way of making a equals zero let's go and look at our chart again what is that going to be doing so channel register zero is our fine um, nose uh, noise period nose period talking dyslexia right um, and we call our sound frequency thing then we're going to set a to two go back to our document so it's going to start with the fine um, bits of our channel B period and then we're going to do the same thing channel uh, 4 which is going to do our third channel now our set sound frequency thing is a little bit more complicated we go in the first memory address we just write that to the current 
um, to the current channel um, channel we have so not channel the current register we have set just write that one straight there um, this thing preserves registers so we don't have to worry about anything we go to the next memory address we get the value out we increment a to the next thing so in this case first one started at zero it's going to make a equals one so we're going to be setting the course part and then we write that to the PSG very very simple um, I will show you the code as I've lent my mic here so as you can see very simple I'll just save that make sure we haven't made any nasty cut and paste errors now we need to put our controlling code in so back to the start we need to initialize our sound nice and early so let's pop that there down here so at this this time I've only initialized one thing oops so we call set all sound frame set all volumes just to set up our initial stuff this bit of code here and then after our actions exactly like we did with the Coleco one set all sound frequency set of sound volume in our loop um, and just to sh show in, in the library I've added the 8 second timer just like I did with the clicker there's no difference there um, and, and same with the Spectre video one so alright we'll compile that that's all good now we need to insert our cartridge though because we're still pointing at the Lego one okay we boot up we get our MSX logo this time of course and hopefully we have liftoff so I haven't changed the number range with this one, so we're actually not using, we're using the same um, <coughs> frequency values as we were on the Coleco, but you can actually go further with the, um, the MSX version, so. But as you can see, it's performing. So I hope this episode has been of use to some people out there. Um, obviously this is only the very basics of generating sound tones on the two different systems. Uh, well actually yeah, more systems than that if you think about it. There is code for the three primary systems we're looking at. So Spectre Video, Coleco and MSX. Uh, you can download it from that from my website. There will be a link down below to the article. And you'll be able to download the actual article as well. Um, and um, yeah let me know any questions and things like that happy to answer them um, obviously the preparation work for these articles takes me a long time so if you wish to support my efforts um, I also have a patreon thing set up or you could just buy a copy of my book too and I do I am working on a new book as well which is based on this series so look out for that in the future so next episode we will be actually generating some sound effects for our game um, but we'll need to cover some techniques of you know writing a routine to control the volume and tone over time because uh, we don't want to have to program that from scratch for every sound so we'll write ourselves a little engine we'll actually use uh, some of the bias routines on some of the systems as well all right i'm electric adventures thanks to all my subscribers thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time